Hey guys, welcome back. So now getting back to our talks about House of X, and there's a few things I want to talk about here, but one of the main things is the level of confidentiality in this 10th life of Maura McTaggart, which is so important that the people of Krakoa have made their own language in order to sustain it, and we'll also talk about how to decipher that language as well. But also throughout the course of the narrative, the understanding that the mutants have that they would rather die than to let the secret out. <laughs> so let's talk about that secret right now so the whole world can know. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week and don't forget to hit that bell up top so you can squat up in the comments for the first hour all right so thus far throughout the course of house of x and powers of 10 we've been shown the level of importance that there is to data and information through a number of data heists with it literally meaning life and death to the mutants and for that reason more importantly they've had to have a level of secrecy because the leaking of this information could very well mean their own extinction and so here in mora's 10th lifetime the stakes are higher than ever and we know this because back in her third life when she had received her warning from the brotherhood of mutants and destiny who let her know that she has 10 lives maybe 11 it put Moira in this position to where in this 10th life it has to work because there's no guarantee that she'll come back after and with her coming into this life with literally hundreds of years of experience and bringing with her from her ninth life the origin of Nimrod and his confidential files on his creation but with doing so and bringing all that information into her 10th life if the humans were able to see any of that not only would they panic and attack Krakoa but this could also speed up their technological advances against the mutant race and so now previously we had talked about the more recent data heights from damage control and so now in this case it wasn't necessarily like your ninth lifetime where Mora was trying to take information into the next life and even within that ninth lifetime it wasn't until Mora was 104 years old till her and Apocalypse came up with that plan together but it's here within her 10th life where the mutants are doing a heist mainly to keep tabs on the technology that the humans have access to but with doing so we had seen that there had been friction with the Fantastic Four with Sabretooth getting caught and Cyclops not necessarily being able to press his hand to get them to let him go but with a lot of indirect suggestions he did kind of give them a wink through conversation and not like a literal wink which kind of makes me think like if cyclops winked like will one side of his visor go dark i don't know one of you guys let me know what you think in the comments but more or less when cyclops let them take Sabretooth, he let them know that Sabretooth is a citizen of krakoa which is where he should be on trial because we take care of our own and your son may need a seat that we're saving for him someday and in the case of Sabretooth, we see this actually come into play because at this point when he's taken into the court of supervillain processing we're given an example of how the laws change not just for mutants but for anyone with powers and more specifically we see with Sabretooth having to go through the 12 strike rule which applied to him about 50 11 thousand strikes ago but with the 12 strike rule exceeding intentions and more or less judging you guilty for just your actions this gives his court appointed attorney a hard time because at this point forget what you went to school for because the humans have also evolved the law to work in their favor so in this case had this been someone like your Franklin Richards you can only imagine through the course of a stretched out trial what laws they would have made up to attempt to imprison him so it's like when we see Sabretooth here he's more of the example of the temperature of this quote super villain legal system because at the end of the day if you have powers and they call you a villain then they're going to justify whatever prosecution they like under the new laws and Sabretooth even understands that and he speaks pretty loosely to the extent of letting these guys know that he wanted to go come into America style with these guys intestines that by all means he could because once again this is Sabretooth he is done worse with even less of a reason to do so but when Emma Frost arrives here along with Esme and Sophie she comes to bring Sabretooth back to Krakoa under the laws of extradition much like Cyclops had mentioned earlier and she does so without using her mutant powers no telepathy but simply countering the law with the law and really either one of them whether Sabretooth or Emma Frost they could have gotten Sabretooth out of here whether on his own or her bringing him out but if they were to escalate such a situation in a courtroom because in return it would only agitate the human's response to a mutant threat but upon leaving when Emma Frost tells the prosecutor like where she can make her place that gun if she so desired it goes to show you just the gravity of what Emma Frost is willing to protect in spite of what she wanted to do in this moment and much like Sabretooth not tearing these dudes apart this is also a huge moment for Emma Frost because like we had talked about back during Secret Empire during X-Men Blue where the population was pretty much split between the mutants and she just decided to take the younger time display Cyclops to herself there was nothing he could do about it 
So to see her walk out of this courtroom without the slightest move on anybody, it shows a great deal of a strain for her character. But where this all comes into play for like Emma Frost, the White Queen, and also Sabretooth turning the other cheek in situations where they wouldn't necessarily do so. And for reasons like I mentioned earlier with the mutants hiding what's going on with Krakoa, with them having the critical information which was given to them from Maura McTaggart, which is also why they recognized Nimrod from the files that they had taken from Damage Control. And also with them protecting the multiple lifetime reconnaissance of Maura McTaggart, they are constantly on the hunt for information within this current lifetime, with this possibly being the last chance, they have the dire need to know how close are the humans to building Nimrod. And so when it comes to the point that they discover the plans for Nimrod actually exist in the possession of the humans, they have to destroy it even if it's a suicide mission. And I like the transparency of Cyclops, who has not only prepared himself mentally but also his team. And though you would think on the side of Professor X and Magneto that it's easy for them to stay behind and say, well, go ahead and do it. On the contrary, we have seen both of them give their lives to either save or protect the mutant race in the previous lifetimes of Moore McTaggart. But when we see Cyclops go to this team that he's assembled to make their way to the Mother Mole, he also informs them that they're not taking any Krakoan plants because of the risk of it compromising any of the intel they've achieved or even their strategies. And initially when he does this, of course, there are objections, but it also works as an incentive to not fail because they don't have the plants as an easy fail safe to fall back on, which means they have to stay super sharp with no room for error. But before we move forward, just to dig a little bit deeper into their level of secrecy with us knowing what's at stake, I wanted to talk a bit about the language of Krakoa. Because since they made Krakoa their province, their home, their country, and when they began to use the plants that we talked about in the previous video, which would allow the mutants to travel to Krakoa from virtually any location, upon every mutant's first trip, a resident telepath will imprint a Krakoan language which is exclusive to the mutants so that after they've arrived for the first time, they're able to read, write, and speak this language, which is not only useful for like mutant amber alerts, but it's also helped them to keep what they've known to themselves, which is super critical, because if the humans had the slightest inkling of what Moira McTaggart has seen, not only would they panic, but they would speed up production and likely achieve within months what would have taken them decades. And so now this new language, it was created by Douglas Ramsey, who's also known as Cypher, because prior to this point, he was the only person who could understand and communicate back and forth successfully in the original Krakoan language. And in Mora's previous life, her ninth lifetime, we had seen eventually that Cypher had made a symbiotic bond with Krakoa, either as a result of his death, likely because of the betrayal event, or he eventually just died with his physical body not lasting as long as his Krakoan counterpart. But as far as where we stand in this 10th lifetime of Mora McTaggart, it's a long ways before that even happening. Given this circumstance, the history repeats itself at all to an extent. But with this language that Cypher created, it is very likely that this is also the encryption to much of their highly classified information. So if this information was leaked and the humans had access to it, this would then give them access to learning everything that Maura McTaggart had discovered previously and brought to this timeline. But it's for these reasons that they attempt to minimize any compromise of this information. But with them setting their course tens of millions of miles away to this mother mole station orbiting much closer to the sun, and upon their arrival, even though they made it seem as if they were coming from the dark side of Venus, but when they closed in on the station, it was undeniable who they were and because of this they could make a pretty good guess of what they were there for. But their element of surprise had a very short window which they had used for Nightcrawler to pretty much go in and gain reconnaissance so they could confirm where everyone was going before entering the ship. And part of their plan here of course is to avoid as many human casualties as possible, eliminate the threat and get out of there. But what's crazy is when they arrive and Nightcrawler's just jumping from space to space and more or less following the schematic that they already have but eventually he bumps into Dr. Gregor and Karima to where at this time they've already called back in the Sentinels, which were stationed on Mercury, mining minerals this whole time, which is another factor which left their defenses so light. But at this point, Orcus has already suspected that their arrival will be too late. And at this point, Dr. Gregor's husband, Erasmus, who's watched Nightcrawler's point-to-point -point teleportation, and at this point, he has a fairly good idea of where the rest of the mutants are gonna dock their ship, with him recognizing Nightcrawler's move as more of a scout. But even with his experience, he believes that the mutants have planned this out too well, and even to a point of much suspicion. And I mean, he's not wrong wrong, with Nightcrawler knowing the exact places to check and the ship landing at the exact place that they needed to land. And because of this, in desperation, in hopes to stop the mutants before they enter the hull, which will give them access to the entire station, he blows himself up and a portion of the X-Men ship in an attempt to stop the X-Men from pursuing their plan which has been going perfect so far. 
but that'll do it for this one guys in this one i really wanted to kind of focus on why the stakes are so high mainly because of the decision of cyclops to not bring any cocoa implants because with doing so the whole factor of risking their lives to get it done it would just leave room for hesitation and that will get into much deeper when we jump back in but until then keep your eyes open for these symbols of Krakoa because they all have a translation any and every time that we see them but like I said that'll do it for this one guys let me know your thoughts down below and I'll just tell you right now like brace yourselves because it is going to get crazy from here but we'll get back into it soon all right later <laughs>